Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be working in Wednesday's zone in the garden. Uh, and that's what we've been doing this week. I've just been talking about how we organize our garden space to keep on top of weeding, deadheading, general garden maintenance, not big projects, just like the normal stuff to keep things looking pretty kept up. So we'll link Monday and Tuesday zone videos down below in case you're interested in watching those. In the Monday one, kind of when we started this series, I guess you could call it, um, I went into more detail about our daily chores and then our weekly tasks and things like that. Um, so if you're kind of interested in learning a little bit more on how we kind of break things up around here, that would be a good one to watch. Uh, let me show you where we're working today. So here's the overhead shot again. There's the house, the barn, the greenhouse. We worked in Monday zone. Monday. This was yesterday's zone in yellow, kind of around our outdoor fireplace, actually where I'm sitting right now. This is where we just got done. And Wednesday zone is the whole area in red. So it's basically the flower beds around the chicken coop, the area around the Hartley, and then the flower bed behind the Hartley that kind of swings over. Hebe is right here, the large Hebe statue. And then it comes over here on the back side of the Versailles garden. So let's do a quick walkthrough. So facing back toward the fireplace area, just to kind of recap yesterday's, there's the house, all the flower beds around the fireplace area by the back shade porch, and then the whole brick area, the flower bed under the golden rain tree, the butterfly garden, uh, that's all included in yesterday's zone. We stopped right here, I weeded around the boxwoods. So today's zone involves the Hartley greenhouse. Isn't that just the most glorious thing? Oh, I love it. I mean, we still have so much to do around it. In fact, that will make this zone go a lot quicker because when the gazebo was here, of course, we had flower beds surrounding the whole thing. So there was a lot more maintenance. Now we just are kind of waiting on HVAC at this point. And I know that's not the point of this video, but that's all we're waiting on. We're gonna get the ducting done uh, inside as soon as they can do that. And then we can get the floor installed. So even if the water and the electric comes later, at least we'll be able to have it set up enough to put stuff in there and start kind of developing the outside. Anyway, Today's zone starts right here, opening to Versailles on this side of the boxwoods and goes all the way around underneath the willow tree, around the back side of the Hartley. Let's just pop back here. All these flower bed areas and the back side of the chicken coop and then it wraps around the front side of the chicken coop. So let's run over here and I'll show you what we're gonna be doing. I actually don't think there's a ton to do around the Hebe statue area. That's what we call this area because of Hebe. So usually I start right here. We look for any weeds. Typically this area is just full of spurge, but it's looking pretty clear right now. Pretty good. We've got a rugosa rose. We're gonna need to maybe do a little deadheading. We're gonna cut this privet out. See that, <laughs> that tall thing? This is a leftover from the privet hedges that were here. So we'll cut that out. Typically there's a ton of bindweed in this area, just cruising up all the plants, eventually choking them. You can see the bindweed on the privet actually. It's quite um, nice that it's climbing up this plant as opposed to everything else. Um, so we'll just pull as much of that out as we can. I usually look for any cobwebs and just brush those off. Doesn't look like much needs it. I mean, the salvia, I could clean up the salvia. I don't think it's worth spending a bunch of time though, just getting the little spent blooms out. There's some really pretty color still on it. Ah, uh, the hawthorn's looking amazing. Look at all those hawthorn berries. They're so pretty. It's interesting. So this part, no berries. This part, loaded. I'm not real sure why. And really not a lot's gone on in this area. I mean, we did a maintenance video where I took after this willow tree and this area is gonna see a huge change. In fact, this whole space is, this whole garden. We'll leave quite a bit of grass up here. I want the view up to the Hartley to be pretty unmarred. I wanna be able to see the Hartley without it being shrouded by anything. But the surrounding area, I really wanted to retool all the flower beds. We'll incorporate this grass that we have a heck of a time keeping nice for some reason. It might be due to the willow, actually. The willow might be just robbing the moisture from the grass here. Anyway, I thought about reshaping this whole flower bed, incorporating it in somehow. We even thought of putting like a little pond in right here, which would be pretty, but maybe a nightmare with all of the refuse that comes off of this tree. I don't know. There is a rose in here, we'll deadhead. Uh, we'll just look for weeds in the rest of this area. It's pretty cleared underneath. I noticed there's just a handful, just a few tiny little weeds in here. This flower bed will need more work. So the front side of it doesn't look too bad. Not too bad, there's no, no weeds. I mean, there's some roses will go in and deadhead. The irises, even though they have burnt tips, I usually just leave them for the structure until the end of the season and that's when we cut them back. 
Uh, let's see, nothing, nothing else. Oh, this blue chiffon hibiscus. I showed this recently in a video about chlorosis because it was severely damaged. And you can see the whole thing looked like this right here, but we treated it in that video and you can already see a remarkable difference. I mean, this plant looks so much happier. And of course the Caryopteris right beyond it is just gorgeous. And we've got a pink Buddleia right there. Is that microchip pink? Is that the right name? I don't know. It's really quite a pretty area. Not as pretty on the other side. We've got some things to address in this side. Of course, having dead grass doesn't make anything look awesome, but the sprinklers over here are capped because when we installed the Hartley, we just, yeah, we couldn't have the sprinklers going. Uh, but it does look like there is drip in this flower bed. It looks like that sedum is either having a too much drip problem um, or it could have had maybe too much fertilizer. Maybe it got fertilizer on accident. Anyway, I'll cut that back. We'll clean up this sedum right here that's flopped. I am going to pull this Caryopteris. It was just shrouded, but I think it's, I think it's a beyond midnight. I'm gonna take a look at it. This looks really great, but I don't know what's going on with the rest. I it was really, um, what is it? Choked. Choked is the right word. It was choked out by all of the um, red valerian and stuff that's in this bed. Uh, there's a lily, I'll kind of clean that up. Poet's Wife Roses. Looks like they could use a tiny bit of chelated iron. I'll probably do that. Um, you know, I'm not really gonna spend a ton of time, like I'm gonna weed this whole section here, um, but I'm not going to trim any of this off of this walkway or anything because all of this is going to change as well. Um, Spurge, see how it looks kind of pink on the ground? That's a weed. Look at all that spurge. We'll take care of that. And in this bed, I've got some beans coming up that seeded themselves from last year. Uh, there's just some minor deadheading in here of the roses. We'll do some chelated iron in here as well. They are looking far better than they did earlier though, before they all looked severely yellow. Whole bunch of spurge down in here we'll pull. Not a whole lot going on here either. So um, when the concrete truck had to come around this way, we uh, pulled up all these bricks, but I think we're gonna continue the bricks on and we're gonna connect these two flower beds. So this little in road with the pergola pad that you know pergola used to be there will be gone. Um, this is gonna be completely different in a while. We'll groom up the ladies mantle. Looks a little bit scorched. And then in this area, don't need to do a whole lot. It's just very full. I mean, there are things I could cut back, but it's pretty late in the season now. Like the White Wands Veronica, I never cut that back and it would have stayed much more in check and not flopped over had I done that. When we go down this way, I'm going to clean up the lambs ear. So I'll deadhead that. Everything looks good though. I'll clean up the borage here just a little bit. Um, it was earlier growing way out into the walkway. The Brennera, uh, I'm, it's really not worth cleaning up or spending any time grooming because it's in full sun and it doesn't like full sun. It was in full shade when I planted it here. Um, so we are gonna be moving that. So I'll probably cut it back and move it later on this fall. Boy, I gotta figure out something to do with this weeping cherry tree. I think I need to trim that upward growth. It is just becoming a monster. We'll trim some of the rose that's kind of coming down, the zephyrine rose, they just grow like crazy. It's kind of magical back here with all the sunflowers. This has just become very thick and wonderful. I love it. Veronica, we can clean up a bit. Need to deadhead these lady gardener roses. And not a whole lot needs to be done here. Probably do a little bit of rose deadheading. And that's pretty much it. Let's take a look around this side. Yeah, this side looks awesome. The poor little lime hydrangeas though, this torchlight coleus is just going for it and kind of covering those hydrangeas up. I might try to unearth those a bit because there's one in here. <laughs> Look at that. Ah. Oh, and that looks so pretty, doesn't it? Look at all those beautiful layers. All right, let's get it done.
got it all done. So it took me a little bit longer today just because I decided to do some cut back um, of borage and I'll show you everything that I cut back. Um, and that's typically not what we're looking for in our zone. Usually it's just the little stuff, but let's walk back through and I'll show you what I did. You already saw what I did, but we'll look at it together. <laughs> there was one weed in front of the Hartley. I did pull that. <laughs> Alrighty. I did a little bit of deadheading here. I didn't go through the whole thing just because it's not super apparent, like you don't notice right away. And I do like some of them to form hips, so I did leave some of them alone. I got the privet cut out, the bindweed. There was a big bunch of bindweed back in here. I got that all pulled. Right here, there wasn't much that needed to be done, except for I did groom up the irises a little bit. They had some dead leaves. I groomed up some dead branches on this tiny wine. There was some tree suckers back here I cut back. I ended up not deadheading these because I want those to form hips too. I cleaned up a little pile of debris here. I deadheaded the Jubilee Celebration Rose right there. Nothing else really needed it in this bed, which is really nice. She's so pretty, isn't she? All right, moving this way. It's still rough, but much better. So cleaned up the sedum, all of the spent, these are oh, Candy Crush, um, hibiscus right here. Cleaned up all of the spent blooms from those. I cleaned up that lily, which in turn kind of made it look a little bit weak, but it looks better than a whole bunch of dead leaves at the base. Uh, I cut back and pulled most of this caryopteris. This whole stem looks really healthy though, so I kind of propped it up with another stick. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Maybe it'll be just fine. I uh, kind of cleaned up the rest of this area right in here. I had to clip a couple of little branches off the blue spruce that had been choked out by other plants earlier this season. And then I cleaned up this whole row. Doesn't that look so much better? I ended up going and getting the winged weeder because it is so dry right here and spurge is so close to the ground. I couldn't get my fingers underneath it to pull it. So I just decided to go over the area with the winged weeder. I did hand pull the big stuff, but it looks better. Look at all these drip tubes. So these are all feeding areas. They're, they all originate over here by the hose, but we are going to be digging a hole for a drain for the Hartley. And, um, and then we'll be rerouting all of the drip once we pull up this area and retool it anyway. For the time being, we'll just have tubes on top of the ground. No big deal. Do you guys remember when I dug these hardy geraniums from the front garden and brought them over here? Aren't they amazing? And of course, if you ever have hollyhocks in your garden, you will never be rid of hollyhocks in your garden. <laughs> I had no idea one of those snuck in with one of the geraniums. I didn't see it. It must have either been the seed or a tiny little seedling inside one of these, you know, groupings of perennials. Anyway, it's kind of beautiful texture. I'm gonna leave it. I like hollyhocks. I did clean up a few spent leaves along the base of these iris. I deadheaded the roses right here. And when I was looking in here, I realized that this, this is a big cis plum and it had suckered all over this area. I did not know that that tree did that. So beware. It's a pretty tree. It's got a pretty color, but it does like to sucker, at least in my garden. Gosh, isn't this so pretty? This view right here, the autumn beauty sunflowers back there, and then the caryopteris is loaded with honeybees. Do you see that movement around that plant? It's amazing. Flashpoint Nefophias had a little bit of a hard time in our huge rainstorm we had, but starting to bloom again. It's exciting. I deadheaded these roses and Benjamin helped me out a little bit. I didn't really need to do anything here. The cat's pajamas nepeta we cut back earlier earlier this season. This is its second flush of bloom. Uh, Daisy May sunflowers uh, not really reflushing that great right now. Maybe we'll give them a little bit more time and typically I cut them back a little bit harder than this. We were trying uh, out kind of a different method. So I think we'll take them back harder next year. They're typically an amazing performer. Drumstick alliums, I like to leave them even though the blooms are spent because I like that dry seed pod look. Uh, we've got some hibiscus. Are those uh, not evening rose? Gah, I can't remember. We planted them in a video. There's a pen penicetum, hardy penicetum. And then this is a um, it's a gold caryopteris. It's about ready to bloom, but I like the bright leaf color. Coming this direction, you can see what I ended up with out of today's zone. Typically a zone per week is a little less or maybe one full pop-up bag. Today, since I decided to do more, I have, these are all like big branches so I can pick them up all at once. I ended up with a little bit more than one bag. So that was, yeah, that was the work for today. I cleaned up the ladies mantle. It looks a lot better, not perfect, but a lot better. I didn't have to do 
a single thing in this whole bed. Now I do have Baptisia, I am noticing. I'm gonna have to get some chelated iron in here because they're not supposed to be yellow like this. They're supposed to look more like that right in here. Their seed pods are awesome. Evening rose hibiscus right back there and we've got a crab apple here. I did clean up the lamb's ear a bit, deadheaded it, kind of cleaned up this little area right here. I did pull a couple of weeds in here and cut back a foxglove, nothing major. But this right here, I cleaned this whole area out. It was completely shrouded. I cut all of the weird top growth off this tree. It could probably use a little bit more shaping, but I'm gonna wait until I can see the structure of it when it doesn't have leaves on it. Uh, but there was some borage that seeded itself all over in here and it just was taking over. So I cut all of that out and kind of cleaned up this area. I pulled a couple of grasses that were pretty much gone. Um, I don't know what had happened to those, but this whole area, I'm gonna be digging and moving a lot of this stuff anyway, so no big deal. Cut a couple of branches off this Winecraft black smoke bush that were just like, whoo, they were huge. Oh, it's so pretty though. Look at all of this texture. Um, I cut back the Veronica's here. I ate a couple of peaches. They are ripening and yummy. I deadheaded the Lady Gardener roses right here. Also, I wanted to show you the Albrighto coleus. Now, I had a ton of other things in these pots, totally unnecessary. <laughs> when you're planting Alternanthera, which is this purpley one, and a color blaze coleus of any kind, that's all you need. It's beautiful. I could have trimmed it back and kept it pinched in order for everything else to be able to kind of shine, but I just enjoy this coleus so much. There is a surefire rose begonia in here. It's like, hello, <laughs> I am here blooming. You can see it on this side too. And then coming around the front of the chicken coop, I only deadheaded branches that didn't have any buds on them. These are the peachy cream, peachy cream? Uh, and they're just like a landscape shrub rose and really deadheading is not required. Uh, so you can just leave everything on there and they just continue to bloom. There is a couple of volunteer sunflowers in this bed. And it looks like, and I just noticed the zephyrine might start blooming here again pretty quick. I did uh, prune the zephyrine a little bit and the one around the back side. So I did crawl into the flower bed on the back side and cut that one back, but I'm not gonna do this one until later, the one that's planted right here. And then I freed the, the hydrangeas a little bit. That's plenty of airflow to get them through the rest of the season, keep them nice and happy. And they are beautiful, aren't they? This whole bed is beautiful, my favorite. And now we're back behind the chicken coop. Um, so you can see the fountain needs some major attention. We have a part coming for our power washer. We're gonna power wash this fountain and the one that's not running right over there as soon as we get that part uh, because they're kind of beyond a scrub with a brush sort of job. And that is it for Wednesday's zone. It felt really good to work through this bed for some reason. From week to week, things are things are different and I feel differently about every single zone at different parts of the year. But there's a lot of really pretty stuff at this point of the season in this area. And it kind of makes you think like, you know, tomorrow's zone, we're gonna tackle the area back in here. And I think I actually might do tomorrow's and Friday's together because Friday's zone involves a lot of the front of the house. and We don't have flower beds up there. So that zone will be really, really quick to do. Um, anyway, I can see which areas I'm lacking, like late summer, interest um, and it's like that like in the early spring i'll have one one area like up by the kitchen is phenomenal in the spring but back here not so good so you know we're just kind of working on flower beds as we go and just adding things as we see little holes or a need for something and that's just how our gardens evolve and it's a really fun process anyway thank you guys for watching today's video i really hope you enjoyed it and i hope you're having a great day we'll see you in the next one bye